the Royal Navy is undergoing a major transformation, retiring venerable workhorses and bringing in a new generation of cutting edge warships. Today, we're diving deep into the Type 31 or Inspiration Class frigate, the Royal Navy's adaptable, globally focused warship for the 21st century. We'll explore its key features and firepower and check in on construction progress. Importantly, we'll understand its crucial role alongside its bigger cousin, the Type 26 frigate, and explain exactly why these ships are so vital for the future fleet. Officially designated the Inspiration Class, the Royal Navy is building five of these Type 31 frigates, and their names invoke a proud military heritage, drawing from warships whose deeds reflect the history of the Royal Navy. Venturer honours the only submarine in history to have sunk another while both were submerged, symbolising the drive for technology and innovation. Active reflects the need for forward deployed ships protecting UK's interests around the globe, and is also the name of both a historic World War II destroyer and more recently a Type 21 frigate that saw service in the 1970s and 80s. Bulldog, named after a destroyer that captured a German Enigma machine in World War II, points to operations in the strategically vital North Atlantic. Campbelltown, recalling the famous St. Nazir raid to destroy the French dry dock that could have been used to repair the German battleship Tirpitz had she ventured out into the Atlantic. And finally, Formidable, echoing a decorated World War II aircraft carrier, acknowledges the importance of carrier operations both then and now. All five ships of the Inspiration class will be based at Portsmouth. Its design is based upon the Arrowhead 140 concept from Babcock International. This itself is derived from the proven hull form of the Royal Navy's frigate Ivor Huitfeld. The decision to use an existing design is primarily about managing cost and risk. Developing a warship from a blank sheet is, is incredibly expensive, time consuming and more time and money also needs to be reserved for fixing issues found in the first ships built to new designs. By adapting a mature, proven hull, the Royal Navy aimed to get capable ships faster and more affordably. This was a key requirement when the decision was made that replacing all aging Type 23s with high-end Type 26s was not financially feasible for an underfunded UK armed forces. The United States Navy has taken a similar approach with its decision to use an existing design for its Constellation class frigates. But the US Navy ran into problems when then they heavily customised the existing base design and so offsetting any cost and time saving advantages. Let's look at the numbers. The Type 31 is a large vessel, displacing around 5,700 tonnes. It measures roughly 139 metres in length. That's around 1,000 tonnes heavier than the Type 23 and around 5 metres longer. Power comes from a combined diesel and diesel arrangement. Essentially, four main diesel engines providing power, coupled with diesel generators. This setup is great for fuel efficiency given the Type 31's an impressive range of up to 9,000 nautical miles, ideal for long duration global patrols envisaged for them. Top speed is expected to be over 28 knots. While efficient, the combined diesel and diesel system is generally considered less quiet than the propulsion used on dedicated anti-submarine ships like the Type 26's, reinforcing the Type 31's general purpose focus. A really significant design feature is lean crewing. The Type 31 is designed to operate with a core crew of only around 100 sailors. That's considerably less than the roughly 180 needed for a Type 23 frigate. This reduction is achieved through high levels of automation, modern system design and even choices like low maintenance deck coverings. The combat management system, for instance, automates routine tasks, freeing up operators. Similarly, advanced sensor integration and automated threat engagement capabilities reduces the number of personnel needed on watch, while centralising digital monitoring 
aids damage control. This lean crewing approach significantly cuts down on lifetime running costs. It also directly supports the Royal Navy strategy for more persistent forward deployment. By having a smaller core crew, it becomes much more feasible to rotate crews, keeping the ship deployed in regions like the Gulf or Indo-Pacific for longer periods, much like the model successfully used with the River Class Batch 2 offshore patrol vessels and HMS Montrose and Lancaster. However, the ship retains accommodation for up to 190 personnel, allowing for embarked specialists like helicopter crews, Royal Marines boarding parties, or operators for Mission Pacific equipment. For sensors, the Type 31s rely on the Thales NS-110 radar. This is a modern 4D active electronically scanned array radar, the first of its kind on an RN frigate providing simultaneous air and surface surveillance. It's complemented by an electro-optical tracking system for visual identification and gunnery control, standard navigation radars, and a co comprehensive communication suite. Trainable decoy launchers are also planned for the class, boosting its self-protection capabilities. The initial fit doesn't include a dedicated anti-submarine sonar system, which I believe is a cost saving too far but the design incorporates space and weight margins for future upgrades. Now let's talk firepower. The Arrowhead 140 concept offers customers plenty of options for weapons. Think of these as optional extras. When the Type 31s were ordered, the British government decided to go light on these options. As ordered, the Type 31 is armed with a Bofors 57mm main gun and two Bofors 40mm Mark IV secondary guns. The 57mm gun is mounted forward in A position, 140mm is also mounted forward in B position, super firing over the 57mm. The other 40mm is mounted aft above the helicopter hangar. These are versatile rapid fire weapons effective against surface craft, aircraft and drones, providing robust self defence, particularly in coastal environments. With the rapid advancement in drone warfare, this firepower may come in very useful as a cheap but effective way of countering drone threats. The primary air defence comes from the Sea Scepter missile system. Sea Scepter is a highly capable weapon able to engage multiple targets simultaneously, including supersonic anti ship missiles out to a range of exceeding 25 kilometres. Initially, the Type 31s is expected to carry a relatively small number of these missiles, perhaps 24, launched from mushroom launchers similar to the Type 23s. As design, that was it for missiles. No land strike capability for a ship designed to work in coastal waters, nor any anti-ship missiles. However, there's been a significant development. The Royal Navy confirmed in 2023 that the Type 31 frigates will be fitted with a Mark 41 vertical launch system at a future date once they've been accepted into the Royal Navy. In April 2025, Babcock was awarded a £65 million five-ship contract to deliver a capability insertion period for the Type 23 frigates. Although it's not been confirmed, this may be a 32-cell Mark 41 vertical launch system. It was not confirmed exactly when these upgrades will happen, but logically it would be better for these to be done before each ship's first deployment. Yeah, I know, logic and government decisions are not words that belong in the same sentence, so we'll have to wait and see. But this would be a major upgrade. The Mark 41 is a globally recognised standard, capable of launching a wide variety of missiles. This opens the door for the Type 31s, to potentially carry Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles or the future Anglo-French future cruise anti-ship weapon. It also allows for many more sea scepter missiles to be carried by quad packing them into the cells. This decision dramatically increases the potential lethality and mission flexibility of the Type 31, elevating it from a lightly armed patrol frigate to a much more potent surface combatant. Additionally, the Type 31s are expected to receive the Naval Strike Missile 
for anti-ship duties, likely migrated from the retiring Type 23 frigates. Finally, a key aspect of the Arrowhead 140 design is adaptability, epitomised by the large mission bay located forward of the hangar. This flexible space, similar to the Type 26, can accommodate Mission Pacific equipment in standard shipping containers, extra ribs, unmanned surface or underwater vehicles, disaster relief supplies, or even temporary accommodation. This allows the ship to be quickly reconfigured for different tasks, from special forces insertion to humanitarian aid. These advanced frigates are taking shape right now in Scotland. Babcock International is building all five ships at their Ross Sykes facility on the Firth of Forth. Babcock has invested heavily in the site, including construction of a massive assembly hall, the Ventura building capable of housing two Type 31 side by side, protected from the classic Scottish weather. HMS Ventura, the first in the class, had her keel laid down in April 2022. She's now structurally well advanced, undergoing painting, and is expected to be launched, or rather floated off using a barge, sometime between April and September 2025. Her entry into service is projected for early 2027. HMS Active, the second ship, had a keel laid down in September 2023. Her aft section, including the flight deck structure, is now complete and she's expected to launch between October 2025 and March 2026, aiming for service in 2028. Work on the third frigate, HMS Formidable, officially began with steel cutting in October 2024, and her fierce keel section was lifted into place in February 2025. She's projected to enter service around 2029, Construction on HMS Bulldog and HMS Campbelltown will follow, aiming for service in 2030 and 2031 respectively. The overall plan targets having all five ships entering service by the early 2030s. Whilst building the first ship of her class inevitably brings challenges, HMS Venturous launch now seems to have shifted slightly from the earliest projections. Babcock is now building three ships concurrently to maintain momentum. A major driver for the Type 31 program was affordability. The initial target average cost was 250 million per ship, part of a 1.25 billion contract for the five vessels. Babcock has since reported increased costs and a projected loss on this fixed price contract citing design maturation and rising labour expenses. However, even with these challenges, the per hull cost remains substantially lower than the high-end Type 26 frigates. So, where do these frigates fit into the Royal Navy structure? The primary designation is General Purpose Frigates, or Jack of All Trades. This means that they're designed for a wide range of tasks that don't necessarily require the high-end specialisation and expensive capabilities of other warships. Critically, they're designed to complement the eight Type 26 city-class frigates. The Type 26 is one of the world's most advanced anti-submarine warfare platforms, designed specifically to protect the UK's nuclear deterrent submarines and the Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carriers from underwater threats. This is a demanding, high-end role. Five Type 31s are specifically replacing the five Type 23 frigates that were configured for general purpose duties rather than the eight ASW specialised ones. Recent Type 23 retirements like HMS Argyle, Westminster and Northumberland likely fall into this category. Without the Type 31 programme, the Royal Navy's total number of frigates and destroyers would dip to critically low levels in the coming years, as more Type 23s retire. That's why the rapid, nearly one per year, build rate of the Type 31s being constructed alongside the Type 26s is critical for the Navy. This allows the overall size and presence of the surface fleet to be regenerated faster. 
ensuring the Navy has the hulls it needs to meet its global commitments. So, what's the verdict on the Type 31? The Inspiration class represents a pragmatic and increasingly capable addition to the Royal Navy. While initially conceived as a lighter frigate, the confirmed addition of the Mark 41 VLS significantly boosts its potential firepower and mission set, turning it into a far more formidable combatant than first planned. Combined with its modern sensors, lean crewing enabling forward presence, and mission bay flexibility, the Type 31 promises to be a versatile workhorse for the decades ahead. What are your thoughts on the Royal Navy's Type 31 Inspiration class frigates? Is it the right ship for the job? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. If you found this deep dive informative, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more naval analysis and warship insights. Thanks for watching.